definitely sport for choice these days when it comes to 12 volt systems to put in our truck, overland rig, four wheel drive, caravans, camper trailers. There's so much on the market to choose from. There was two brands that I was considering when I was deciding on what to put in the F-250. I've never spent this much money on a power install before. Um, my past truck, my Ranger, I just had a basic charger. It wasn't even DC to DC or anything like that. It was basically just a straight isolator, nothing fancy with an Optima battery and um, just a small power panel. It was nothing like I've done to the F-250. When I bought the F-250, when I put, had the canopy on it, if you've been following my channel, you would have known I had a fiberglass canopy on it. In the back of that, I had uh, the deck draw system. I also had a bunch of uh, Baintech gear. So I tried to keep all my power install the same sort of brand so it all kind of flowed. So I had a V2 battery, I also had a Baintech DC to DC charger, and I think it was a 40 amp charger, and I also had one of their power panels. So. With the F-250, I wanted to keep the same sort of system. I wanted to keep it one brand, and the one company that stands out right now would be Enerdrive. So they're really taking the whole lithium setup to the next level. I've never had lithium before. This is the first time I've had lithium. Um, and from the three or four camping trips I've been on so far with the truck, we've now fine-tuned it. Thank you very much, Andrew from Enerdrive. He's fine-tuned everything right now, so it is working with the lithium battery to a T. And um, yeah, it's it's definitely a step above AGM, saving on the weight, running their DC to DC chargers, their 240 chargers, just keeping the whole system one brand. And the new thing out right now is the Cymarine panels. So I'm gonna run you through the whole install, what we've done. Um, the solar on the roof and everything like that, um, the auxiliary solar to plug in more solar if I need to and basically just give you a rundown on, on what I decided to do for the power install on the F-250. So we'll start around on the uh, passenger side first. This is the uh, kitchen side of the truck. So basically we've got um, Mitz Alloy to fabricate up this nice little box here. Um, I wanted everything to be displayed so I can just quickly have a, if I'm getting something out of the fridge or I'm at the kitchen, I can quickly glance at what's going on. So Cymarine, um, obviously they're a marine kind of application, they do a lot of boat stuff. But these panels are moving into the four-wheel drive scene now. And I can completely understand why. This is the most advanced system I've ever kind of seen. The amount of stuff you can program into this unit, um, I haven't got everything done yet. There's a few, still a few things that we need to um, have connected, um, as in the water tank, we still need to connect that in yet. But basically, this Cymarine unit is telling me the percentage of my battery. So it's telling me right now under the conditions I've got with the solar that's coming on the roof, with this upright fridge running, I'll have three days and 20 hours thereabouts of power left before the battery is completely knackered. So if I just highlight the screen for you guys so you can see better. So up here we've got a barometer. We've also got the date, the time, and then there's the three days and 20 hours or so. So we're at 99% on the battery. Coming down now, um, it's very overcast right now so I'm getting not, hardly any solar coming in. Um, so the DC to DC slash solar is basically 1.4 amps, so not enough going on right now. The sun's behind the clouds. The 12 volt loads on the unit right now, so there's 2.75 amps, which would be this fridge. Um, the USB up the top here, I have two USB ports. Um, the 200 amp lithium, so that's given me a readout. I'm pretty sure that's um, what's currently leaving the battery. So we've got here the voltage of the battery. Um, also got how long's left, like on the home screen. We do have a cabin temperature. So this is telling me the temperature inside the canopy right now. So it's 25.8 degrees. And here's your barograph. So this is basically telling me the pressure and stuff. And it's really handy to have that because I can set an alarm or so so I can kind of know when it's going to rain. So right now we're at a 1,018. 
So then it circles back to the home screen. But if you go into more of the advanced settings, you can have this thing pretty much doing anything you want. So I'm also going to get the water tank fitted. So that'll be um, on one of these other screens as I scroll through as well eventually. So after probably after Barograph, it'll have my water and stuff like that. So super nice. I'm so happy with it and glad that I spent the money to, to get this installed. So down the bottom here, we have uh, basically switches for everything. So um, the fridge is the upright here. Outlet 2, which I'll show you on the other side, is also running the other fridge. So I currently have that fridge off because there's nothing in it. Kitchen lighting. So that turns the kitchen light on. And it's all just light touch. Interior light, that'll turn the interior light of the canopy on. USB, I can turn the USB ports that are on top of this unit on or off from here. So I have them on charging a few things right now. And then cabin lights is the power to my rooftop tent. So my rooftop tent, if you haven't seen that, I have a video of me doing a small power install on that thing um, a few months back. Basically making a power panel and stuff to go in there so I can charge things and also have my lights and everything in there. So that's what that powers. Down here we've got a um, 1000 watt sine wave inverter. This is a remote switch so I can turn it on from this side, save me walking all the way around the other side. And then that just simply turns it off. And here we have all the same information that's actually on the Cymarine screen. This is on the application. So it's going to tell me exactly what's going on uh, via my phone as well, which is a really cool feature. So we're running four USB ports up there on top of the panel. So down here below the panel, we also have our core lighting kit, which is basically a dimmable switch just there in the corner. So the wires running up on the canopy door. We've got the core lighting kit throughout the canopy. It was the easiest way to uh, install it. And then we just basically have a, a kitchen light. So it's just white light. And then we can also change it to orange if we want. And then we can also dim, dim the white light right down and also dim the orange light right down as well. So we're just around on the driver's side now and you can see the core lighting there in the center of the canopy and most of the power cables and stuff running to the back. And then we just followed through with the same thing on the other side of the canopy doors. And then I can also plug in more, more lighting if I want to with that, that orange plug down the end there. I can connect more lights if need be. So like I mentioned before, this is probably the most advanced system I've ever owned in a four-wheel drive. So the reason why I went with the Enerdrive system was basically to kind of keep everything one brand. So we've got a e-power charger there, three bank multi-stage charger, it's a 240 charger. Um, then we've also got 12 volt uh, DC to DC charger just there bringing in the solar. And then we've got a 1000 watt sine wave inverter. A lot of people have been putting 2000 watt inverters in, but I just don't need that much power. And most of the time they're putting 2000 watts in to run things like coffee machines and induction cooktops and stuff like that, which I, I really don't plan to do. So I've just gone with a 1000 watt inverter for now. Just charging camera batteries, drone batteries, um, my Ryobi battery for my air blower and stuff. But that's about it. So that's a 200 amp hour VTEC from Enerdrive. So it's going to work in with the Enerdrive system perfectly. It's all um, programmed to match, all tuned to match. So it's um, yeah, all kind of dialed in to work together. So another great thing about the uh, VTEC battery by Enerdrive is that you have an application on your phone as well. So it's actually a smart battery and you can also get on the Cymarine app um, just to double check things are running correctly. So the battery itself has an application and also the Cymarine as well. So that way you can uh, just, it's kind of good. You can double check things that things are running according to what the app's saying. So I am running solar on the rooftop tent and I didn't really know back then when I did fit the uh, 
the flat panel. I was just testing it, wanted to give it a go, stuck it up there with some 3M tape, didn't really think too much of it. And now as I've researched more, these panels do, don't like to be kind of mounted flat um, on a surface like this. They kind of lose their efficiency, but again, this is all stuff that we all learn as we, as we do this. So um, the technology is still fairly new, these flexible panels. So basically I'm gonna tear this panel off. It was a cheap panel that I just bought online. I'm gonna put a better quality panel up there, but I've also now got some um, some thick kind of core flute with like a five mil, 10 mil gap. So that way I'll get better airflow underneath the panel, making it more efficient. It's, <laughs> I can't believe how solar works, but you rely on the sun, which creates heat, but the heat makes the panel less efficient. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird how that works. You're relying on the sun to power the panel, but yet if the panel heats up, it's less efficient. So anyway, I'm not a solar expert, but it just blows my mind that that's the way it is. So like, if you were to pour water up there right now on that panel, you'd probably see a spike in amperage coming out of it and it'd be more efficient. So again, I've just got to tear this one off, put my, my new, I bought a nice high quality panel I'm gonna stick up there. Got the core flute, gonna put that underneath it. I'll stick it down the same way with the 3M tape. So that'll be another video coming up. But yeah, so I am running solar. I do have an auxiliary solar port on the side. I've been thinking about putting a hard panel up on the roof of the truck as well, just um, just getting more solar. Um, the thing is, I'm just trying to I'm trying to reduce weight on the truck as much as I can. Um, I don't want to have things in there that I don't need. So if I can get sort of, ultimately, I'd like 300 watts of solar on the rooftop tent. Um, that'd be awesome. I just don't think that I have the, I have the space if I put hard panels up there, but because the way the flexible panels are mounted or the way they've made, um, the sizing's kind of off for the size of the tent. So as you can see that 200 watt panel, well 200 watts, so what they reckon, I don't believe it's 200 watts, but I could probably fit two of them just, um, but again, I can't find a high quality panel that's that kind of size exactly. It's kind of real cheap and nasty. So anyway, I'm gonna keep searching. However, I still might put a normal mono glass panel on top of the F250, on top of the Yakima roof platform. Um, that could be another option. So yeah, I definitely do wanna get more solar happening. Um, yeah, but with the 200 amp lithium, um, I haven't gone on enough trips yet to understand um, how much power I'm gonna need, how much solar I'm gonna need. So it's keeping up fine from now what I'm doing. I've got that fridge running 24 seven, um, the upright. So it's really, it's been pretty good. So around on the back of the driver's side where I've got the secondary fridge, you will have remembered on the panel it said outlet two. So that controls this panel here. So it controls this Anderson also controls this single plug and these two USBs here as well. So that's what that's for. So that way I can isolate this fridge um, if need be, just by simply pressing that and it'll uh, turn everything off on this side. Um, the Anderson there is for a travel buddy that I'm looking to install very soon. So that's a video coming up. But yeah, um, I've got this fridge running on ingle sockets. So basically the screw in style bought a bunch of those plugs. Um, I just like them for running fridges on. Um, you can run them off Anderson's or um, normal 12 volt sockets. I wouldn't run them like that because they tend to fall out on you. Um, kind of a pain in the neck, so. But either Anderson plugs or these plugs are fine to uh, run your fridge on, so that's what I recommend. So when we turn on the cabin lights, I also have a switch just up here. So it has a small LED light bar that then casts light down over night time. If I wanted to climb out of the rooftop tent, I just hit that switch and then I've got light shining down the ladder in the middle of the night so I can see what I'm doing. Um, and it just kind of lights up the ground around the back of the truck here, which is really handy and it's not like an overly bright light. So on the back of the truck, we've also added two reverse lights. Uh, these are Steedy, they're like a little five inch um, size light, flush mounts. So they're just basically full reverse. Whenever I'm reversing the truck, they'll just come on. So I absolutely love how the truck's turning out. Um, 
we're nearly there um, with everything that, we're, that I'm trying to get done to the truck. So this is a, another another episode to Project F Tech, the full power install. So the Enerdrive system, 200 amp hours of lithium. Um, again, I don't know enough about this system yet. It's it's pretty advanced. Um, I know a lot about 12 volt, but this system's kind of just that next step up going into lithium. It's kind of, it's all new technology and yeah, it's what kind of everyone's going to right now. So again, I've only ever ran AGM batteries. Um, my last setup was 135 hour, um, the Baintech system. So again, it's all going to take time. We'll see how it goes and I'll report back in a few months and just let you all know if it's any good, if it's worth it, if it's worth the money. Um, but yeah, this is the most I've ever spent on a power install and it, it hit the bank pretty hard and I had to go and do a fair bit of overtime to get to get this paid for, so. Don't mind if I do. This is definitely what it's all about, but drinking a cold beer, isolated, no one else around, peace and quiet, just hearing the birds, the wind. Catch you guys in the next one, eh?